<laughs> Hello! <laughs> uh, in this episode of Finno Greek Machining, uh, well, it will be um, well, a parting uh, blade holder. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I have uh, bought a Sandvik uh, uh, parting blade uh, with inserts, and uh, that uh, blade is left handed. Uh, well, uh, it was intentional in a way. Uh, well, uh, because I want to keep this uh, parting plate upside down uh, in my lathe. Uh, well, uh, it's also dimensioned. Uh, the dimensions of that parting plate uh, is uh, such uh, that, uh, well, uh, the existing holders, uh, the commercial existing holders cannot be easily attached uh, to that uh, lathe, uh, to this multifix uh, quick change tool post without uh, heavy modifi modifications on on that uh, holder. So I decided to make my own. Uh, well, and uh, <laughs> actually I have uh, done most of the work already. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, at the moment testing it and uh, then we have a small uh, detail which is uh, well, uh, since the blade width of this, the insert width of this holder is only two millimeters, it's uh, quite thin actually, and it's run upside down. It's not very easy to have a cutting uh, oil if you need lubrication. So the cutting oil, it's not very easy to get into that two millimeter wide crew, especially if it's a deep one. So. <laughs> Um, luckily, this uh, blade has a coolant hole in it, so uh, uh, I will uh, build an uh, additional pump, a hand pump, in that uh, holder to squirt um, cutting oil into that groove using that uh, coolant uh, passage uh, in, in the cutting uh, blade itself. Well, uh, my first now task, my first, uh, the next task will be to test this one. There has been a lot of uh, argue uh, whether it will be resonate, uh, whether it will be making uh, noises, uh, uh, vibrations, uh, chatter, etc. Uh, well, uh, as far as I can tell now, it doesn't resonate at all. Uh, it's acting very silently, just making a sizzling sound and uh, it goes like into a butter. Well, I know from experience that uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm still afraid. Uh, this parting plate was not particularly cheap. It was uh, actually very expensive uh, and uh, inserts are not cheap either. They are really like 14 euros per pop. And this is, uh, well, uh, they are only two millimeters wide, so it might not be possible to find them uh, like in eBay or, uh, well, yeah, it, it can be very, very hard to find. But since these are Sandvik, they are really durable. Uh, well, uh, now uh, I first uh, attach a few pictures about the parting plate itself. It's a really nice thing. And then uh, I attach a few pictures about this uh, tool, how far I got it so so far. And uh, then uh, we will go on, uh, well, the last uh, thing of the puzzle, it will be the oil reservoir, the cutting oil reservoir, which is uh, in that uh, blade holder. I have never seen uh, this. Uh, there might be a reason why, why uh, uh, this is normally not done this way because uh, the, the, I don't know, uh, but I think it's a good idea. Well, let's see. Uh, well, first the pictures and then we uh, do some uh, late uh, job, uh, uh, mostly cutting off the uh, piece uh, to work with and uh, then we do the reservoir. Yep. Huh. These inserts are super tiny. They are only two millimeters wide. The inserts are pinched to the blade with uh, springy steel. 
There is a special tool to change the insert. The plate body is 8 mm thick, whereas the plate itself is only about 1.7 mm thick. The maximum cutting depth is 26 mm. Well, it all started from a lump of Uddeholm Sverker tool steel. This tool steel is quite tough already in its uh, soft state. This is the side that goes against the tool post. This is the side that goes towards uh, the chuck. The dovetail is quite accurate, allowing only about three hundredths of a millimeter play. I was suspicious about this cut. Even if the end mill is quite tough, it flexes. I was awaiting a shutter and poor surface quality, but this one surprised me in a positive way. This is the side that points away from the workpiece. I used the round-nosed end mill to shorten the dovetail so that the plate fills it completely to keep the chips from gathering in there. Ok, now we are at the lathe. Uh, and uh, here is the parting plate. Uh, as you can see it's upside down. And I have already pushed it in about, uh, well, five millimeters maybe. And my intention is to cut this uh, thing which has the diameter of, at the moment, oh, well, something like 40 millimeters, I believe. No, it's uh, 33 millimeters. And uh, uh, I will just part of this uh, piece at the end of. So, and uh, I'm running this, <laughs> uh, well, 800 RPM, and I'm uh, at the moment feeding it manually. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, uh, well, a fan of uh, how to feed at this point, because, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Uh, I want to feel how it feels, I've, because this is uh, uh, actually the second time I'm using this. Uh, the first time was uh, just a 10 millimeter rod and it well went like in a butter. This is also uh, mild steel, so it shouldn't be a problematic thing. So, wow, uh, let's see how this cuts. I'm running this backwards. Uh, yeah. And safety classes are very essential here. As you can hear, there is no chatter. It just makes a sizzling sound. And there it goes. And if I... You can hear some chatter if I stop but uh, feeding. Well, yeah, but uh, still, I'm uh, really afraid of doing thi this. Really, I am. I'm not a uh, fan <laughs> in the fun club of uh, doing these kind of things. But let's cut this. Okay, there you go. It's evacuating the chips down, which is really good. They are dropping into the chip pan and not flying everywhere. Well, you can, okay, hear from the sound that it's approaching. Well, it's. Uh, now it's about, uh, well, two millimeters. Let's see if I now can bend it off. I really, yeah, yeah. I really don't want to 
push my luck here. Well, it's no, it's still quite. Uh, it's hard to see inside there, but yeah. Okay, I will uh, now bend it off. Let's take this tool away from here, so I have room to room for my hands. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, and the, well, the surface finish isn't uh, not uh, it's uh, it's not the best. Uh, Let's go there, like that. Uh, well, uh, the surface finish uh, is uh, exactly like when uh, you are parting. Okay, it works, but I'm uh, really afraid of using this. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. I could have uh, pushed it farther away. I know from the when I did the smaller thing that uh, you can actually let, let it go entirely through and it cuts really nicely, but uh, because this has such a large diameter, I'm a little bit afraid of doing that. But it went okay.
So, well, here we have this uh, work piece, so to say. So, first of all, this is the uh, cutting blade. It's a Korokat Kudi. And this is, uh, well, as you can see, it's very thin. And, uh, well, uh, it's exactly suitable for my lathe. Uh, I wouldn't like to have any wider than this. And, furthermore, uh, well, um, there is a hole, <laughs> uh, actually here, right under here, this uh, workpiece, there is going a hole through this uh, thin material, it's going uh, to this hole here on the back side. It is intended for a coolant, and uh, well, I don't know how they bored that one, uh, well, uh, that's uh, a mystery for me how they did it, but uh, uh, there is a hole anyway, and okay. So and now this uh, this recess here uh, matches to that one there, and uh, this uh, dovetail is quite uh, tight. There is you cannot feel any play on that one. It slides there, but uh, yeah, I measured, and uh, there is uh, um, some uh, play on that one maybe. Two hundreds, uh, maybe, maybe three hundreds of a millimeter. That's anyway quite minimal. Okay, and here we have an O-ring which goes into that recess there. Uh, this is uh, two millimeter thick, and uh, uh, the recess is one point eight millimeters deep. And now we need some oil. Uh, yeah, okay, so the blade goes to there. Yeah, okay, now we have some oil in there. And uh, uh, furthermore, we have a ball in there, like that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the uh, that one uh, acts as a, well, as a one-way valve. And now I just push this there and it's already quite tight <laughs> actually and now there should be uh, a connection between that hole and uh, that hole yeah okay and then we ha I have uh, this uh, this is uh, high speed steel I think this is a D bit uh, a D, D bit uh, blank uh, but uh, yeah the diameter is quite exactly six millimeters and they, there we have a hole, which is also 6 millimeters. It's uh, reamed with uh, 688 uh, reamer, and it's very, it's actually quite tight. And now uh, the intention here is that you push here, and then you get a little bit of uh, lubricant out of there. Yeah, like that. I don't want to put any stops there. Well, it's a little bit crunchy at the moment. Maybe we have some. No, we shouldn't have any. Well, time will tell. Okay. And then I have here this, and uh, which we just made. It's a <laughs> reservoir. And then we have O-ring there, like that. And yet another ball. It goes into there. And uh, then this goes here. Like that. The thread is uh, M M10 slash one. It's it's a fine M thread. Well, it um, it's making sounds. Well, let's see. Let's put some cutting oil into there. Just uh, a little bit. <laughs> That should be enough. And see if uh, we have connection. Yeah. There, you see. Very nice. Uh, so this means that... Oh, oh man. Uh, now I don't need to uh, use my brush or anything, 
I just push here and I have a, a drop of uh, cutting uh, oil, oil in there, like that. Yeah, it works. Okay. Now, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we need, uh, first of all, always that. Uh, we are going to need here, uh, uh, these are just some cap screws which go under here. Um, I need to replace these with uh, with something else, really. This is M6, uh, but I didn't have anything in my stock. To, to uh, be suitable here, uh, I'll just go there. This doesn't really need a lot of uh, force to hold uh, the blade in place. Actually, I think it would uh, hold as, as it is already, but uh, oh man. I'll get rid of that oil. I don't want to have it in there. It's now. Let's take it out here. Yeah. So uh, I didn't have a suitable cap, no, set screw. Uh, I will uh, uh, have those uh, replaced with set screws once I get them. I have to fetch them from a local dealer. And yeah, this is just pushing the Played against the dovetail here, like that. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and uh, this reservoir, uh, well, it's uh, big enough. <laughs> uh, I bored this uh, to exactly 25 millimeters. Uh, it's quite exactly that. And uh, now I want to have a cap here. And uh, well, uh, that cap shouldn't be airtight. <laughs> um, and uh, it should also be such that it uh, holds uh, itself in place. So if I, so it doesn't, so it doesn't fall off by itself. Well, actually, if I put there, uh, I don't think it's falling off. And then we have the tool holder itself somewhere there, and uh, it goes into there like that, like that. Yeah, I think I can tighten those as well. So here it is. Uh, <laughs> this is something you don't see in uh, in. Uh, tool holders like this, it's uh, something uh, I would uh, consider being uh, special.
Yes. So uh, that's uh, actually the well uh, parting plate holder. <laughs> uh, yeah, it works. And uh, well, it's not a beauty; <laughs> it's more like a beast. But it works, uh, especially when it's upside down and you turn it. You can run it like. Uh, 800 rpm uh, with 40 millimeter diameter and uh, usually at that point you will get uh, uh, well a devilish chatter no matter what kind of uh, parting plate you are using this one doesn't it works just silently well there is a physical uh, uh, reason for this uh, because now uh, when when you push the work into the workpiece and it rotates this way. It will actually try to push the uh, blade out from the work. If it's uh, rotating uh, the opposite side and you push it in, it uh, tries to dig in. And that is uh, what is causing uh, uh, trouble in uh, parting blades because they, are, they usually have quite high cutting forces. That's first, and then they have a wide uh, cutting area. This one only has two millimeters, and uh, I'm pretty sure if I'm, uh, I would be running that uh, like uh, the correct way, <laughs> uh, it would chatter. Uh, at least all my, uh, I have this uh, um, uh, high speed steel blade which uh, I tried, and that one uh, didn't end up well. It uh, actually crashed horribly. It bound on the sides of the work, and uh, that uh, that's not good. That one doesn't do that. Uh, uh, and then this oil delivering system, that's actually quite fantastic. It's uh, it usually when you are parting, you are you have to keep a brush or something there to deliver your uh, your cutting fluid. Uh, not a very good thing. This one, you just push a button, and uh, you get. Uh, uh, the oil exactly where it is needed. <laughs> That's uh, nice. Okay, enough. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'm proud of that one. Really, I am. So now, in the next episode of Finno Greek Machining, we are going to uh, finish this uh, rotary vane compressor uh, thing. There will be some holes to be bored uh, into the cylinder the intake holes and the output holes for air, for example. And uh, I have some ideas how to organize those into the uh, just boring holes and putting uh, tubes there. I don't know whether that's a good idea, uh, but I have some uh, maybe better ideas out of that. So, till then, bye!